Good morning, everyone. How do you feel? Feel good? How many feel good? I heard this is very, very strong. Uh, Justin, could you reduce the amount a little bit? Okay. Today's passage is in First Peter, and it says, "Therefore, with minds that are alert and uh, fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be." Brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed as His coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires that you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as He who called you is holy, so be holy in all of you do. And for it is written, "Be holy, because I am holy." What is this passage to do with our feeling? Make a guess, Hassan. What is to do with our feeling? Jesus said, or in the Bible. For everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. You agree? If you've been blessed more, you are supposed to be to give more, right? Okay. As a believer. What we've been given from Jesus? What is the greatest gift we received from Jesus? Salvation, great salvation. The passage before this in. Peter is written is writing to the believers. So the first twelve verses of this letter is talking about the greatness of salvation. It's talk about the nature of salvation. But after all of that introduction, here he said, "Therefore, with mind that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you." He changed the tone. Now what he is given are the commands. So the first twelve verses, most of them, almost of all of them, actually, the verbs in the indicative mode. Which means just to state the facts. What is the salvation? What had happened? You know, what happened to you? But here, he gave commandment by using the verb of uh, imperative. The verb are here. Therefore, with mind that are alert and the full sober, set your hope. This is the commandment. It's a command. Set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at His coming. So, with all the knowledge of introduced at the first twelve verses, talking about what is the salvation, you guys get the greatest gift from Jesus. And now, what do you do? First, you set your hope on the grace to be brought to you. When Jesus Christ is revealed at His coming, remember how He defined this. How He defined this hope, or the grace. The grace is to be brought to you when Jesus is revealed at His coming. And then what is another command? As the obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in the. Ignorance, but just as who called you 
is holy. So be holy. Be holy in all you do. This is another imperative mode verb used in this part. So for as a transition ending of the description of the greatness of the salvation, here Peter points to the responsibility for believers. That is set the hope on the grace. And second, be holy. Second, be holy. So let's think about this for a while. Why, why set up the hope is so important? Why grace? Why do you think the, the hope is so grace? Grace? It did not say you do this, do that. But it says set up a hope. What does the hope to do is the salvation. Why the hope is the greatest thing Peter wants to mention in response to the receiving of that great gift from Jesus. Why? Well, we see we have a hope on something. And God, what is telling us? It is glorified God. It is glorified God. We have been mentioned about faith, right? Faith is important. And the hope is exactly a reflection of the faith. Faith, what is the faith? Faith is what we believe. Right? We believe what God has done, we believe in God what has said, and we believe what God. And that is the whole point God wants us to do with Him. Because Israelites, they don't believe Him. That's, that's make it done deal. Every time they turn to other gods, it's her God. It's it just blow away the glory of God. So what God wants is our faith in Him and having a set up our hope on Him, on the grace of the coming. What is the, 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 the coming of Jesus Christ? This is the promise of God. The difference between hope and the faith is hope is our attitude toward the future. We have hope on God. Basically means we have believing what He has promised for the future. Okay. His promise for the future is our hope. If we have hope on His grace, that means we really believe Him. By believing Him, we glorify Him. That's why we need to have our hope. That's why here is so important. So whatever we're hoping for, whatever we do, is all targeting the grace of, of the second coming of Jesus Christ. It's not the, it's not the current work. Okay. So, in other words, to believe in God, to anticipate the glorified fulfillment of future promise is just so important. That's why he is calling to hope, because it glorifies God. Okay. So, this is the first thing. How do we do that? When we look at the verses, set up your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. And with there is a there is a sentence modify how with minds that are alert and fully sober. This describes how we can set up it. How we set up what what are the conditions? We have to be uh, alert. The alert means original word means with the belt on, kind of or be ready to move. 
be ready to respond to all the situation around us. And the word sober, which I think is very important. What does sober mean? Sober is a word described away from drunk. Clear mind, with clear mind. So when we think about drunkenness, what has made us? Made us blurry, confused, it out of our ordinary ordinary what? The condition we can perceive. We can make judgment. We can make judgment. That's why it's so important, because if we cannot make the correct judgment on what we're going to do, make decision on what we, our life is going to be, and that's going to affect the first command. It's going to affect whether we can set up a hope. That is what, why I think is today's message, because very often, our life, the way we make decisions, depends on how we feel. Because our feelings, emotions, very often will be the major factor made us to make decision. Think about that. How often we, when we think about what we're going to do, we make a choice, make decisions. What is the, what is the factor going to affect you? Let's say, uh, let's say if, if, you know, in the church or in our life, you are asked to do something. What is the first response you have? Very often, what I get the answer is, oh, this is good, I like it. Or, oh, this is not good, I don't like it. Whatever we want to do, or when we talk to our, our children, you know, the, the, the conversation, even between parents and uh, and the children, what other things will, will affect the decision? Very often is as long as you are happy, as long as you feel good. I think that is a major problem now, because well, when I visit China, visit the friends, at the similar age like you are, their children, and the parents like our I, my age, when we talk about the future for their children, very often whether they do this or do that depends on how they feel. And that also is our problem. So that's why I think today's message is mainly focused on the sober. Sober means we have to be able to tell the truth. We have to be able to stay away from drunkenness. Many of you probably have no idea about what drunkenness is. But that's the first part. And together with the second part, if you look at it, why we cannot, why we cannot make correct decision or be sober because we were what? We conform to the evil desire you had when you lived in ignorance. These two are actually working together. The reason we are so, why we follow those desires? Because we do not have the ability to tell which one is good. And we tend to, be, to conform the evil desires. And here, what is directly affect the second command, how to be holy. Because the first one is our hope, the second one is how we do it now.
How do we be holy? How can we be holy? The reason we cannot be holy very often because we conform to the evil desires when we live in ignorance. Why we living in that? Have that desire because what what the word in ignorance mean? Lacking of knowledge. Because we have no idea. That's why we are sober and we cannot even be alert. So these two commandments actually are the. You cannot separate them. Without knowing, we are. We have the tendency to conform to the evil desire. Then we do not know. Actually, we cannot tell the the difference. What is the desire driving us inside? Very often we say, "Oh, this is what I want to do. I want to do. I, you know, I put my life there." However, when I look at the motivation, those motivation very often coming out from the the desires when we do not know God, and the, as a believer, or when we growing up, we have to gradually know. What is the wedding of God? What What does it mean? Be holy. See, when he talks about the holy, he talks about what? Obedience. Holy means just obey God's word. Set free, right? We talk about holy being set free. It doesn't mean we're gonna be holy in a condition we do not sin, but holy means whatever we do, we set aside for God. We set aside for God, and、uh, that relates to what obedience. Obedience means whatever God wants us to do, we do. Do you see this? The the side by side comparison. The evil desire is kind of things we want to do. Worldly with worldly lust, but being holy is a. Obedience to what God wants us to do, and to on top of that, we have to be sober. Sober means we have to be able to tell the difference, and this is the responsibility. Peter wants us to know, as a Christian, when you receive the greatest gift from God, what you should respond. Okay. The responsibility is clear. We need to set up the hope on the grace, and we need to be holy. But in our real life, have you guys, or have we ever think about what is our hope now? To what we set up our hope on in our daily life? But again, if To think about that, that's gonna help us to put our hope onto the grace of God, okay? And are we alert? Are we sober enough? And are we holy? I think to examine these things are important for our daily life. And the reason I talk about feelings because these are the things really. Drive us to do things. Whatever we do, most of them I try to satisfy our desire to make us happy. To make us happy. Study versus game. What do you do? Study is hard. Game is happy, right? Worship, reading Bibles, devotions. All those things in our life, we have coming to church. We have to make enough, enough excuses, all convince ourselves to say, "Okay, this is good. That we do it." Otherwise, hardly people gonna do it until there's a certain satisfaction there. But what made us? Satisfied is important. 
How do we know? How do we know? Because we need to know. Need to be able to, to tell. Do you know when we describe things? The reason we do things, we do not follow God's will, do not set up a hope on the grace of God, is not because we don't like, it's because we don't know actually. Very often because our lacking of the knowledge about God, lacking knowledge about our own responsibility, lacking knowledge about the evil desire. Very often we mix the, the desire inside of us together with the God's will. Anyone agree you like to follow evil desire? Do you want to? I don't think anyone going to agree with that. What makes the difference between? Because of knowledge. Have you ever thought about the, uh, the, drunk, the drunk people? It's lose their mind. They don't know what they do. They don't know what they do. And very often the drunk cause deaths. Right? This is the this is number one reason probably called cause all the, 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 the accident in the in the in the the severe ones on the road. Why? Do they want to die? No. Because when they in the drunkenness condition, they lose their mind. They don't want to do. They, they they do what they don't want to do, and they and they did what they did not realize what. That. So awareness, the priority of our life, is important. Very often we choose the the wrong priority. What is the first incident in the Bible re recorded? If anyone remember about the drunk, drunkness caused the. Uh, what is it? I I, I hope it's okay. Anyone? I think there's one in Genesis. That's one of the Genesis. That's a great story, right? What is it? It's Noah, right? Because it says this. Um, is a man of soil proceeded to plant a vinegar. We, Vineyard. While he had drunk some of his wine, he produced it by himself. And then he became drunk and lay uncovered inside his head. And because this drinking, he brought the curse to whom? To Canaan, right? Handsome. It's you know why he get uncovered? It's such a shameful thing. He has no idea. Because of he lose his mind. You know, that's why I think to do everything right first with God is stay stay what? Alerted and uh, and the conscious. So let's think about our our daily life. Now, let's think about ourselves. What make our make decision? I think here's come to the emotion. The emotion is so easy to follow what makes us happy, what makes us and reject what makes us uncomfortable, right? What is uh, many many things we do based on our desire. But you know when we recall, when we recall the maturation of our life, what do, what do we realize? You're gonna realize what we like, what we enjoy, change it along the road when we get older, get mature. Is that true? When we were young, what happened? What made us happy? Uh, we like, what do we enjoy when we were young? We enjoy, uh, we enjoy sugar, right? 
we enjoy colorful things, we enjoy toys, we enjoy you know, a lot of things, it, and we are self-centered. As long as we are happy, we, that's fine. We, we cry when whatever we need anything. We don't have control. We follow what we feel, right? When we are hungry, we just shout out. That's why we were young. We do not have any idea about the colorful thing as long as we think it's good, we're going to eat it. Why? Because of what? what? Because at that age, two or three, or four, probably, they cannot care. But when we're getting older, what is in kicking into our life? How do we look? Right at your age, even, I mean, probably more, older ones also care about their look. Everyone, right? When, you, when we gain more knowledge, we, what we care not only the colorful things. Now we start to looking at friends, self-image. We have to we kind of feel lonely. What makes us be happy, what makes us satisfy is not only the food on the table. Right? It gets more complicated when you get to teenage. You have to be recognized by certain group, by certain people. You care more about performance. Okay, what makes us satisfied or desire change? Did you realize that? We have to be accepted. And here, one thing you're going to realize is the difference between teenage and, uh, and uh, the child is a component of others. So when you are not mature, you are so self-centered. But when you're getting older, what are you going to care about other people's feelings? If you do things only you, only you enjoy, there's always things you have to convince yourself, okay, other people okay. Okay, actually that feeling coming very earlier. In my case, when I stay with Angela now, he's, she is four years old now. She cares about my feeling. If I get mad, she's going to ask me, Daddy, are you mad? So she has to come to a point, to whatever she could, to make everyone happy. Like watch TV. She, she said, okay, I have to, we, we set a deal, we, we make a deal, we have to set up a timer. Okay, so every time we ask him to set up a timer, she's going to do it. And then later on, she just forgot it. So if you remind her again, she will, oh, oh, yeah. The only thing she does that to make us agree, to make parents happy. And if she cares about the madness. If I we speak too loud, she's going to say, oh, are you mad? So you see, this kind of thing is going to be more and more into your life at your age, right? Not only you. You see, we are not happy. Very often, it's not because we do not, we are lacking of anything. It's just simply because our friend or our parents have issue with us. <coughs> that is a maturation. That is a maturation. When we're getting older to adult, what do we care about? We care more about the career. We care about our colleagues. We care about the family. Right? Feeding one person is easy now. Live, not die, it's, it's easy. But have the whole family have the whole community can be recognized our our contribution be appreciated it's kind of make a adult life standard for whether you're satisfied or not if anything happened to our children there's a problem we're gonna say oh I think none of us gonna be feel comfortable or you know, you can stay still. 
We have to make everyone in the house settle. Why? Because we get matured more. We have that kind of awareness, the knowledge about life at different stage. When we're getting older, become elders, what do we do? We start to look at the children. Okay, they are good to be independent. If they are not independent, even we have money, I think the elder will not be settled. See, whatever makes our desire satisfied changes when we grow, when we change. Okay. So, in this case, when we think about our, what do the design our future, or how do we decide, make big decision on what we should do or will do, it's not a simple, simple answer like, as long as you feel good, as long as you feel good, as long as you are happy. Because when we grow older, if others are not happy, then there's no way we're going to be happy. That is the reality. And that is something we are lacking now. Every very often I talk to people, especially teens, everyone, even adults, have an invitation to do something, to initiate something. The first thing is, this, we tend to think it whether I like it or not. Do I feel good about it? Do I feel good about it? And what's going to make that difference? The difference made it because we became Christian. We have to get rid of the old desires. We have to have a clear mind on our responsibility upon receiving of this salvation. If we do not have that component in our life, Whatever we do, we really just follow our own desires. So, be sober, we have to be able to set up the priority to make decision what we do. In the Bible, actually, there are many cases you see people do not follow their devotion. Jesus rebuilt his disciples for their for their following of the, the word desires. In this one, let's look at some of them. This is in Luke chapter 9. What does this talk about? This is talking about the Samaritans, okay? Jesus sent his disciples James and John to Samaritan. However, the people there did not welcome them because he was healing the he was heading for Jerusalem. Okay, so they did not help, did not wel welcome them. What happened then? So James and John saw this. They asked, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven? To destroy them. John and uh, James, because they do not welcome Jesus, their, their visit, Samaritan, he said, he was angry, they were angry. No, let's cast the fire. Then Jesus turned and rebuked them. What well, then? Did Jesus have that power? Yes. And the apostles also have that power. Because he said, Do you want us to call fire down? Because they were angry. If they go follow their, their emotion, what is going to satisfy that emotion? Punish them, right? 
I'm angry. You do not welcome. I'm going to punish you. I have the ability. However, Jesus said, no, you do not do that. There's another one. This is about angry. There's another one about the, the happiness, the, 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 the joy they have. What is, anyone recognize this one? This is in the Luke chapter 10. It's talking about Jesus sent out 72 his disciples out. And then when they return, it's very interesting. So 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. Okay, what Jesus replied. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to tremble on the snakes and the scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. This is what Jesus said. Okay, you have this power, I give you. And then what he said? However, do not rejoice that the Spirit submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. See here, his disciples will rejoice because they can do a lot of miracles. Jesus says, no, do not rejoice on that. However, rejoice on what? Rejoice simply the fact, your name already in the book of life. What this tells us? This is so often we do things, we do so good, and then we are happy. God, look at, you know, we have that. And Jesus says, no. However, this is the transition. You know, all the good things we expected, heavenly actually, every Christian probably going to hopefully have all the miracles through our hands can be carried out. However, however, Jesus said, no. Simply by knowing the fact, your life, your name already in the book of life. That means, look at the future. You don't look at what happened Anything now, right now. He simply asked his, his disciples to not follow the emotion, whatever satisfies them right now. However, look at something in the future. But the best example will be Jesus himself. If you think Jesus is a whole human, whole God, whatever we experience, he experienced. Then in the John, book of John, there is a said that Jesus wept. Why that? Because they heard Lazarus going to die. The news. What did he do? Did he, Lazarus is his friend, Mary's brother, is so precious to him. When he got the news, what did he do? With his power, he can do anything. Is that true? He can do anything. But he did not. He did not follow his feeling, his emotion. He simply let Lazarus die. And decay. Why? He can do that, right? He can, he can just save him. People say, okay, this guy has been... Make the blind be able to see and must be able to walk on the other No. Hey, wait. Wait. To the moment when the God wants him to glorify God through this miracle. And for himself, right? He's a hopefully God. He put himself on the cross. Why? Simply to what God wants him to do. That is the best, the most precious example of being holy. Do whatever God wanted is not nothing according to himself. He has all the feelings, emotions. Be humiliated, right? Humiliated, painful. He can stop it at any time he wants, but he simply submit. I think 
in the Bible, there is other verses saying, you know, some establish my steps through your promise. Let no sin rule over me. Michelle, what will be that promise? What is that promise, Michelle? See, we are here is not for our own satisfaction. There's another higher calling from the heaven. Everything we do, we have to consider whether this is whether this is reveal our heart to set up a hope for the grace on the grace. Which Jesus is gonna bring to me, bring to us for his coming. And we do this to try to be holy. I think with this idea we have to know establish our steps through your promise. That's why we need to know him better. Know his his will for every step in our life. Okay, we do not forget, oh, okay, we have eternal life, then we just live now. Everything has to point over there. Be holy, right moment to do whatever God wants us to do. And obedient. So therefore, do not let sin ring your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. That is the condition Paul described. How people do in their life. They will ring, you know the ring, how strong the word ring means. You have no room. It's ring. Grasp everything you do just to follow that. Just like, you know, so that you obey is evil desire. We obey, you know, we follow the evil desire we do not know. We follow it. Follow means what? We we do it actively. Is not being dragged. They attract us. John said, Do not love the world and anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, comes not from the Father but from the world. This is so hard, so hard to apply. Because very often, we simply apply, okay. The word. What is the word? Things. What the, the desire from the word? Eating good, living good, looking better. Are those coming from the, the desire from word? We have to be able to discern them. Sometimes it's so difficult because it's always component. We try to convince ourselves this is holy, this is godly. Or simply deny everything materially. Reject every blessing, you know, even quit the job. Or even just uh, stay away from people because they are dirty. And those are hard lessons to learn and uh, to pursue. So back to our original passage. I hope today's message is going to remind us we have to think hard on exactly what God wants us to do. Exactly what is the grace. You know, looking upon the, the grace He's going to bring to us. Set the hope over there. Because that is the way to glorify God by believing His promise. Whatever He said, what He promised, He promised we're going to have an eternal life, we're going to be you know, we're going to rule the, everything with, with Him, universe with Him. We're going to be, be with Him forever. That is His promise. Okay. So do whatever satisfies Him. That should be not our emotion, not say, oh, I'm not happy. Because very often our happiness is just a, just a Temporarily, like like that, you know why the word things is not good. The word and its desire pass away; it won't stay. 
we know very often one way if we recall when we, anything we are so desired so want as when we were young but when we look at now oh that's funny that's funny right it is so that's how we should look at our life in the future when we learn more about God when we when we live more out of him then we're gonna understand him more and uh, really be a holy person and glorify him okay feel good is not enough feel God in him feel God for him that's what we want well, let's pray Yola, thank you for this morning. Although we have so many difficulties at the start, hopefully your word will really reveal the responsibilities as the believer we should um, we should have in our life when we keep us alert and sober, so we be able to discern what is the right thing and what. It's a direction we should uh, lead to in our life. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.